Sponsorem odcinka jest hellcase.com, stronka na której możecie otwierać skrzynki i dropić niesamowite skiny. Wpisując kod Mateo dostaniecie darmowy balans, natomiast z kodem Mateo 1337 plus 15% więcej do depozytu. I możecie go wpisać nawet jeśli użyliście wcześniej innego kodu. Jest dostępnych wiele metod płatności, m.in. kryptowaluty czy skiny do CSGO. Link do stronki znajdziecie w opisie, serdecznie zapraszam. Siemka, razem z ekipą robimy konkurs na kostkę Karambit Lore. Aby wziąć nim udział musicie zasubskrybować nasze kanały, logując się poprzez wybraną platformę na stronie. A jak już to zrobicie, możecie odebrać bonus, który zwiększy Wasze szanse na wygranie giveawaya. Link znajdziecie w opisie. Here we go then, straight onto this A-bomb site, trading these early frags. The smokes are perfect, and it gifts them that early bomb plant. Yeah, it's a really nice setup as well. I mean, classic Vertigo on your T-side. You rush a ramp, take full control, grab a plant, and then immediately withdraw. It's so difficult to retake. Neo is going to be the key player here because he needs to have an impact towards ramp, but absolutely nothing is found. It's just drive-bys, glocks, left, right, and center. Who's Rico, last man standing, gets a tasty one tap, but nothing more. And there are a lot of losses on the table. They did beat complexity 16-6 though. So, it's hit or miss. <laughs> yeah, no certainly. And then and then getting handed a 2-0 to complexity, which is what you'd expect to happen. But a little best of one win definitely pumps a little bit of wind into your sails. Popping in a lot of those early frags, two quick kills towards the A bomb site, and there's Neo to shut away another one. Just Sparrow left. He's gunning for this B bomb site. The nades don't connect, but Neo's right on target. Unicorns of Love, the Prosto team. Those are solid teams. Yeah, you dig into the stats a little bit, and it does look a little bit worrying on paper when you look at some of these score lines. Yeah, 16 forward by endpoint. What's this from complexity? There's a, a 16 3 and a 16 8 against complexity. Budapest 5 with a 16 8 as well. These are very one sided maps. Contact 16 6 and then Nuke, which is the map that's coming up next. So some worrying results, but. The, the name power and the stock that we put in those teams is definitely higher than this Polish powerhouse that we're seeing. Interesting 1v1, successfully taken by Stomp. Prevalent factor for most teams on this specific map, that orc presence, especially towards a ramp, those longer distance angles. If you're going to want to contend with Stomp over towards mid, you're either going to have to Molotov him and flash him out of place. Exactly what happens here. But this response is really interesting. Anorius bunching together. This might absolutely work. Chedka hits the shots. They'll be looking just to hold this angle, see if he can catch them on the cross. And, well, what was that about 2v4, I heard? Because it sounds like it's a 2v2. In this one, it all comes down to this frag from Neo, which he cannot find. Makes Stomp's job a lot harder. Needs a massive quad kill in this one. Every opportunity that Jedka can ace his fellow poles and stomp's just running out of time he's going to bail with that awk well, he's just in front to almost act as a shroud the problem is how long will he last the answer a matter of seconds already on us losing one as it will be just another a play or will it 25 seconds to go we're seeing whistler back away it looks like it is going to be a quick sprint to be Neo now becomes the man of the hour. What can he do to hold on? He's going to hear them running at him. At least he should be good for one kill here, surely. Makes it to a second effect and drops the bomb. That could be huge. Neo may have just done enough to win the round here. There's so little time on this bomb flakes that I think that Recchio could be able to do everything. Catches Hades in the open and now Taz has to respond. He misses the shot. No Molotov for him. Everybody else with a fairly hefty bank of util. Oh, and this is the boost. This is so creative. That is straight from Reddit. He finds a quick kill and it gets traded straight back three times as hard. Knock on his head and it's just like an empty shell. That said, early kill for Whistler comes through. Spear with a second as well. This is looking pretty disastrous so far, but then Taz 
The man, the myth, the legend, he steps into the server, gets a triple kill, and that pulls things right back into play for the Anora side as we look at a stop-motion display of what could possibly have gone on. There we go, back to normality. On two versus three. See, Taz looking for more, and he gets away with it, going for the ace play at this point, finally shut down. But is it too little too late? 40 seconds or so to work with. Norris' A play starts to take hold here as they all come from side lane. It's ballsy because it's just all out Glock jewels. Try and seal the deal here. Follow up smokes do come through though. This is where the plant gets guaranteed in the round. Starts to get a little scary. As they're so embedded into the backside. There's just simply nothing that Whistler can do. Minio becomes the only player left in the server for the CT side. Baby to wait. Story slips into action now, finds not only one, but opportunity for a second. Unfortunately, unable to capitalize on it, will be just traded away as Jekka, very similar circumstance as well. It's a great first frag, but needs to do more, needs a second kill at minimum, perhaps a rifle that he can find. Best time to peek is when his opponent is planting, but unfortunately for him, he gets a glilled to the face. Leaving just Shapiro, the only player left in the server. His pistols, unfortunately, haven't been able to accomplish anything at all. The main sticking point for Sparrow here is he hasn't got that defuse kit, so he needs to hit this bullet right here, right now, and stomp a bullsy peak. Here comes the AK to spray away once again. Well, he only takes one for his troubles. That gives away a single rifle, but nothing that Haley should necessarily be able to do. Minio's the big point man here. He can find a one beak onto the second member, then maybe. But Raiko's able to take him away. And now Hades' his AK comes into play. There's the initial headshot. That levels out the numbers temporarily. And it's Raiko again to slap right back. Big triple from him. Hades has to go one more to close this out. Plenty of time on that clock, but it's the double peak to do it. And they do take... I think a first CT round. This was a 9-6 finish. Honoris now in the driver's seat, firmly. With a couple of headshots, that might be enough to put them over the top. Minio gets completely out-timed. I think they have to save here, to be honest. They may have 20 seconds left, but they really have the utility to get onto the site. That one smoke simply would not be enough. Neo Stomp holding the Ango to an absolute T. No one can get through. That this time, rather than slowly push up, they just fully committed. Very gung-ho play, but we'll pay off. Shekua does get the double kill to at least have a bit of a defense, but that's when Taz Stomp all both strike into action, creating the two-on-two. -two. Hades this time, though, rather than pushing, waits for the aggression of Honoris. That change of pace for the T-side might get them the sight, but it certainly won't hold on to it. Now Stomp, yet again, left to do it all on his lonesome. Can hear them pushing. Making so much noise himself, though. He's going to get caught in a second if he's not careful. Oh, missing his shot as well. That'll be the beginning of the end for him. The awkward sidelining angle around the smoke. Another frag. And the time is still on the board for Fnatic. This smoke is going to dissipate, leaving Taz in the open. And he's able to swiftly shut him away. The benefit? Well, you've got four players for this all-up brawl. Prism claiming the first. Jekyll will strike back for more, but it's the T-side coming out on top here so far. Honoris dropping the clock ever so quickly. Ten seconds now on the line. It's not looking possible. Honoris will snipe in for map number one. 16-14. Everyone else will be rocking the Glocks if my map is correct. Unfortunately, not really the greatest of starts. Honoris on their CT side. Drop the hammer. It's Taz with a double kill. Everyone else chiming in for one or two, leaving just Minio in a one versus X scenario. Now three players left after I believe he found one, but it's simply not going to be good enough of a pistol for Whistler. He's all his utility to set himself up now for the retake, including the frag grenade to block the door. It's really smart because that's a crucial piece of Whistler's post-round strategy here, but that certainly wasn't. Double headshot, leaving Neo all of a sudden last man standing. This needs to be exceptionally snappy shots. He's going to move through the smoke right now. Absolutely needs this one misses. 
20 seconds left on that bomb as well. As he does creep closer, he's just edging through that window angle. And there's a freebie, but escapes with the second. Needs that AK in hand. He hits the headshot. What the hell was that? He's not got enough time left on that bomb to do the trick. So he has got to backtrack. Interesting as well. A lot more pressure towards outside now from Anoris. Clearly wanting to defend secret a little bit more. It's working out wonderfully here. Neo, good for two. Makes it to a third, in fact. Hades missing. A big frag with the AWP there just to deny that third kill. And most importantly, deny control of the bomb, which, yes, is quickly lost, quickly regained, however you want to frame it. But most importantly, Whistler put in a tight spot. Now looking for the quick frag here, but not to come through. That's when Minio will strike into action. Takes the drive by Jewel, and from there, Taz's situation. Pretty dire. Should have spotted Minio's peak, but... I don't think he did. I don't think he realizes that Minio is just a shoulder's width away. Finally, a change of pace from Rico. Nice to see him stepping up at the start of a round. Wrapping a quick entry pick towards Ram, but I have to be careful here not to be overexposed. Ooh, that's nice. The bomb thrown forward rather than backwards with the right inside blocked off as well. The frag grenade is going to do some serious damage. Talk about a blessing in disguise. Very aggressive, but flashing through the smoke as well, just to force the issue. Rollover performance beforehand. Anything close to double digits is just incredibly scary. There go the refrags, and this is one that Honoris should not be losing. This would be heartbreaking right now. Neo accidentally suicides, jumps to his demise. And it's Minio versus a pair. The AWP misses. Raiko trades. And there's the latter. The bomb not on yet. And Stomp, he looks way colder on this map than he did previously. But that nade. Oh, it's lightning hot. <laughs> a massive double kill. That smashes and clatters the whole of that attack. And Vistler go from a great situation to Minio having to do it all. He's got slight support from Sparrow from behind. This time, there are no HEs to do the damage, and that is a massive pickup there. That is absolutely huge. Both ways, in fact. Somehow, was been able to seal this one back. Now, lining up. Oh, give it the 1v1s. Oh, Taz. I just don't know if Honor have that practice, have that time actually on this map drilled. As of this point, this pistol's looking successful thus far. A couple of kills the other way could have changed the tides. But nevertheless, Vistler, they lose all three of those B-site defenders. They were pretty heavily stacked up towards the ramp area. I love that aggression from Honoris. Just wide swinging that ramp angle. And now they're in a massive advantage. Just trying to fall away. Fnatic finds the big opener here. And that second was absolutely crucial. Stance by Honorus. I love the way that they're dictating the pace of this game. Playing those fast rounds earlier. Really put Vistler on the back foot. The MP9 and M4 combo doing good damage. And now Jedka looking for even more headshots. He's still alive, albeit 2 HP. And there's another one. Raiko drops, and it's Stomp versus the world. Is the Ori under pressure? Hades burning to 75 HP. Or as if Honoris are going to close this out 2-0. They want to do it right here, right now, especially with Neo picking up that first frag. And they bought themselves decent map control. Taz, he's got the information. Here comes the AWP as a response. And Hades... He's not going to find the position to nail any shots. Back down to A. And Honoris, another opening frag. It's all off the back of Neo. And the Orc chimes in again. There's another frag. The bomb is dropped. And this is falling apart, Flakes. The whole of the A bomb site is a complete lockdown. They're going to have to play magnificently to get out of. They've snuck their way down to hell. And Jedka gets caught off guard. Pants down. Sparrow responds. There's the one to one trade. And all over this map right now, all eight remaining players are looking towards this A bomb site. The bomb is actually a million miles away from this entry pack out on A. They need to go for this rotation back over. And Taz finally through. Prism finds the headshot. 
And it leaves us in a 3v2. Shbarrow closes. This is so back and forth. Has a final headshot. He needs just one more. Shbarrow's right up above. Playing it perfectly right there. More entries needed. And it has to be right through this Molotov to do the damage. Minio one and gets away. Scott free. Caution back. But Stomp, what a shot. That was right through the wall. A crazy wall bang to level up the numbers. That's a B site gone again. And Honoris, a real chance now of doing some decent damage. All three overtime T-sided rounds resulting in after plants. And they've got to close this one away once again. Sparrow hits a shot in the meantime. That's Neo's head eliminated from the server. A three versus three as the numbers close once again. Stomp shuts away two. And this half is done. To sneak into position, he's right inside a fence and behind the pick. But Prison finds three. That might be the game all done and dusted. Hades needs all of the kills. This has to be the quad, and it's just not gonna happen. Taz, the captain, finishes him off. It's 19 to 17. Double overtime looked inevitable, but Honoris says no. They take 1 0 in the Swiss system. What a result. I mean, it. <sighs> It was unclear at all points of the game, including an OT.